Who's a researcher studying the relationship between game rules and how these rules impact narratives. And then they build AI systems that manipulate that relationship. Today they're going to talk about a game that they built that combines super hot, a challenging first person shooter that is based around the ideas of time, with a top down platformer called Baba is You. And they're going to talk. Nice. <laughs> and they're going to talk about how that was a challenge, but also very enriching experience to learn more how to live between the genres. So I'd like to ask you now to welcome, with a big hand of applause for you, Pyro Fuchs. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to my setup time. I'm going to plug in my laptop. Yeah, sure. I see. I think we ended a bit early with the uh, with the previous count, but we can just take some time. Let Pyro Fuchs set up his system while I'm asking questions about his project <laughs> while you're while you're busy. I mean, we were playing games, and this is one of the other games of parts of the maze, which is to distract the people setting up. But I think we're pretty close to setting it all up. All right, I think we're ready to go. So one more time, one big round of applause for Pyro Fuchs. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Yunus. Uh, welcome to my talk, Super is Hot, Designing Games by Breaking and Combining Others. Um, so I'm Yunus Rabi, uh, a French Moroccan game developer, also known as Pyro Fuchs on the internet. I've been a game developer for the past 10 years. Uh, I've been a game researcher for the past two years. And you're stuck here with me for the next 25 minutes. Um, in this talk, I'd like to do three things with you. I'd like to introduce you uh, to the unique challenges in a game design perspective when making mashup games. And I'd like to tell you about the mashup game that I did. Super, its name Super is Hot, and how I came with this with design. And I also want to tell you what it brings you as a game developer to make mashup games. So let's get started. So, what's a mashup game? Um, my definition, a mashup game is a game that mixes elements from two well-known games or two well-known game genres. Uh, we have examples of that uh, even in, in the AAA uh, industry. Uh, for instance, we have Phoenix Wright versus Professor Layton, a game that mixes both the investigations of Ace Attorney and the puzzle solving of Professor Layton. And we have, for instance, Script of a Necrodancer, which is a mix between rhythm games and roguelikes on, on the other hand. And this one went even further. They even did um, an, a three-way mashup with uh, Religion of Zelda uh, in the form of Cadiz and Hyrule. So these are examples that mashup games can be pretty popular and exist even uh, in, in, in the whole industry. Um, what's interesting about mashup games is that often, they exist first in the imagination of players. Like players of, which are fans of two different games will sometimes think of, hey, what if this character like Isabel from Animal Crossing and Doom Guy from Doom were friends and went on adventures together? That's so cool. 
Um, and today I won't, I won't tell you how I did that with two different games that are very different. Baba is You and Super Hot. And they, they look super different at first, but I will tell you how actually we are more, more closer than we think. Um, so the story here is that uh, I was very busy at work in my PhD. I wanted to take part into a game jam because I had like so few days. Uh, I did like three game jams at once with a single game. Um, and I entered 7 day FPS, a game jam that birthed Super Hot the game a while ago. And I wanted to do a small variation of Super Hot, something simple. Like maybe instead of having time moving when you move, which is the core rule of Super Hot, maybe having something like time stops when you move, which is the opposite. Um, I was having like a hard time deciding which variation to do exactly. I was like writing down different things and was like, you know what, I kind of want to just flip them around during the game. A bit like with, with Baba Is You. Baba Is You is like uh, a game where you have rules written on the screen and you can manipulate the rules of the game on screen. And so I did that. I translated the concept of super hot uh, within Baba Is You, within the Baba Is You language. And you get something like this where time moves only when you move. Uh, you can do it by having two rules. Time moves, so time is move, and you moving. So you is move and having like a when connector in the middle. That's like the core rule of sup super hot. And I was like, what if you could have like a small baba that could go on screen and like modify the rules live during the game and says, hey, instead of having time moving, have time stopping when you move, which is interesting. Um, so this was the core ID, but that's not enough. It's like just a general concept. Uh, you have to solve, you have to find what, where the game is within this ID. And to do that, so what I did is like, I looked at what was common between Super Hot and Abba Is You and what, what was different. So they have more in common than, than what we think. Um, they are both games about problem solving. In Abba Is You, you solve puzzles. In Super Hot, you solve the problem of not getting killed by bad people. Um, and then the, they both are games where they give you time to think about your actions. Always you is a puzzle game that doesn't move if you don't move. Super hot doesn't move if you don't move. So they both give you time to think about your actions. They are both puzzle games in that regard. And finally, they are both games about counterintuitive rules. Games where you have to think about what you're doing in different ways from what you're used to in other games. And, and that's the whole thing. But there's also a challenge there, which is that the games are essentially about very different skills. They test different skills from a player. Super hot tests um, ask the players to think about 3D dexterity, to, to think about angles, about shooting people in the right order, about the loading time of your weapons, and to manage all of that. Abase You is a game about, it's played on the grid. It's not 3D, it's 2D. And it's a game about puzzle, uh, puzzles and logic chains, about making rules, and the order of the rules and stuff like that. This is very different ways of different ways of thinking. So finding a game here is not easy. And that's only the gameplay part. There's also like some other types of challenges, like a technical challenge. Uh, for instance, Super Hot is a 3D FPS. This means that the engine you have to make is a engine that has to handle uh, 3D graphics, but also physics and it's like collision based and, and stuff like that. But Baba is you. Uh, is played on a grid world. It's very different, and the logics that you have to have here to make the ways you work, you have to have like a system that can parse rules on the grid, but also execute rules in a specific order and on the grid itself. Um, it's not so easy when you make a mashup game to, ha to have a game engine that mixes both all the time and to find ways in the architecture of software on how to make things, how to link the puzzle to the FPS and where. It's, it's, it's not trivial, but that's cool. That's like an interesting challenge. And there's like many more in every parts of game design. Uh, like for graphics, how do you mix up very, two very different graphical aesthetics, like the abstract polygon shapes of Super Hot and the doodly things of Baba Is You? How do you mix the audio atmosphere? They have like very different atmospheres. In, in this game, how do you mix controls? Like, do you just say, hey, here's the control for one game, here are the controls for the other game, or do you want to find where the controls can be linked up together? Um, and there's level design, of course. How do you design levels that test two different skills, as we have seen just before? And but more importantly, what's the game? What's the goal? What's the goal of Super, of super is Hot? Uh, it's not so easy to find. And I want to tell you about it. 
So the development process of super hot, super is hot, sorry. Um, what I did first is what I was like, okay, let's go, let's go deep. Let's disconstruct the FPS. What are the core rules of an FPS? And the things I found is like three things. First, it's movement mechanics. You as a player can move and the world can move. Then there's like shooting mechanics. You can shoot stuff and these things move. And then it's like, you can lose, you can die. So if you translate that into Bowie's your rules, you get stuff like, uh, you can move, so you is move as a player, and the world can move too. They can act on their own time. So you have this concept of a time that is flowing all around you, and that is represented by the idea that time is move. Um, then you have shooting mechanics. You have the ability to shoot stuff, and the things you shoot can move in time, uh, in space. So I, I model that by saying you is shoot, you can shoot things, and the things you shoot can move, shoot is move. And finally, that's the thing you want to avoid, you can die. And that's the rule that you don't want to see happen during the game. And of course, because it's an FPS, you have to have walls, enemies shooting at you. And that's, that's the core elements of an, of an FPS there, and this is the things that we are going to like, break, break up and reprogram in different ways. Um, so first thing, we, I recreated the, the rules of super hot. So the things I introduced to you, that time moves when you move. You have this when connector in the middle. And I made a small prototype, you're going to see a small um, early development video about the implementation of it and how you can reprogram the game live. So, uh, uh, uh -huh. so we have this rule written in the middle, that time moves when you, when you move. And you have like this little smiley who will move around and shift the words inside. So first the prototype goes through that, goes through time moves only when you move. You can see that the bullets don't move when you stop. And they move only when you, when you make small steps. And then the, the, the small character is going to shift the words around. Shift the word time and the word you in the sentence to make a new rule. And that rule is you is move when time is move. Take a second and try to think about what it means. Um, it means that whenever time flows, you're going to move to. So this means that you move all the time, actually. You can't stop anymore. Like, you're always moving. And that's just hilarious, right? Like, it's an FPS where you're always sleeping on the ground. There's no, there's no stop there. That's, that's potential there. You can do so, so many cool things by writing rules. And this is where I was beginning to find the feeling of the game. I want people to do cool things or to do funny things inside it by programming rules in, a sur in surprising ways. Um, and that's very cool because you can create these very cool scenes that you have seen over medium. Like for instance, in Matrix, you have this scene where a uh, Neo character can sh stop bullets in super is hot, but it's easier to say, shoot is stop, and suddenly all the bullets stop in time, you can like, hey, you're not targeting me anymore. Or you can be like, hey, maybe time is stop. So your enemy freezes, and you can like walk around them, shoot them in the face, go back, sleep time again, and they get shot, and they don't understand what happened. So, so that's so cool. You can create all these cool superpowers and these cool abilities in, in, inside it by programming the rules. And let me look at the time. Let's see if we have time for some uh, interaction with the audience. Uh, I wanted you to to uh, basically make a rule, and I was going to find a way to use it inside the game. So to make a rule, you use a component in the first block, you connect it to the component in the other block, try not to make a rule that already exists, and we'll see if, if you have a cool ID, if we can make a cool moment, a cool scene around, around that. So real quick, is there someone in the audience who can go to the stage right now and, um, and tell me what's their ID, and we'll see what it does? Yeah, I see you. All right. Yeah, yeah, just tell me. Shoot is you, cloning yourself. Yeah, shoot is you, I love that rule. Uh, I think it's somewhere in, the le in level five of, of the game. Um, shoot is you, how, the way I interpreted it was like, you are your own bullet, right? You shoot bullets, you become the bullet. And let's, let's see what it makes. So we have, we have this level, yeah. It's, it's right here. Let me go back, yeah. So you have this rule, and the small character is going to make 
shoot is you. Yeah, it just made it. It made shoot is you. And then it's going to use that inside the game to shoot itself on the game. <laughs> and, and that's it. And, and kill people that way. And, and this, because the character can't move, they're using this rule to move around the game, but also like going angles that the enemies can shoot off because they don't think of looking on, on the roof and, and they play this way. So yeah, Shoot is, your, is like su such, a great, such a great movie. Like you can become your own bullets and go in, f in, in whole space thanks to, to these rules. So that's so cool. We can do so much, so much things. Like maybe you can do Shoot is dead, so killing all the bullets, like erasing bullets, or own rule that I couldn't make inside the game that I would love to would be you is time, so you become time. When you move forward, times move forward. When you move backwards, time moves backward. That would be interesting to see, right? And that's the whole, that's the whole feeling of the game. You, you use rule blocks to make rules, to unlock cool abilities. Uh, these cool abilities allow you to kill bad guys. And you have like two different types of feelings there. When you use cool abilities, you feel so slick, you feel so cool, like it's so smooth, buddy. And when you, when you mix these rules together, you're like, oh yes, I can, I can become time, you feel so smart. And those are the two core feelings that I wanted players to feel when playing the game, to feeling smart and smooth at the same time, thanks to the puzzle and the FPS components. Um, there's a there's question of how we actually make levels out of this. Here I'm going to give you a reference, I'm going to ask you to, to watch the Game Makers Toolkit video of how ABASU works, they explain very well how RV Teikari offered of ABASU, designed the, the levels, and the idea is to first find a cool thing, a cool mechanic or a cool phenomenon, to put it at the end of a solution, and then guide the players using obstacles towards the solution. Um, and yeah, I just did that. I just need to add two more things to, to the game to make, to make it work. I add solid blocks, so these are like the gray squares that allow me to lock things in space so I can decide which rules the player has to play with, which is very important from, from a puzzle perspective to, to lock people into, um, it, to give them obstacles, basically, to give them obstacles to go around. And then you have this idea that when you edit the rules of the puzzles, this impact the FPS world, and this is interesting, but this gives like dominance of a puzzle on the FPS. And I was like, there's a way to make it more interesting to let the FPS impact the puzzle world too. And this way, I, cr I created like a thing I call unlockable blocks. So you can see that enemies have words on their heads. When you kill the first enemy, the, the block with a number one in the level becomes the word that you, that you, that you killed, basically. So you can like unlock new words by killing, by killing enemies in the game. And that's make a whole cool loop. Uh, where you have like Roblox making rules, you feel smart. You use these rules to have cool abilities. These abilities allow you to kill bad guys, you feel smooth. And killing bad guys give you more Roblox, so more opportunity to feel smart. So it's like a cycle of, being, of feeling like smart and smooth again and again. And yeah, that's the, that's the core idea behind, behind Super is Hot. Um, that's still a prototype, but uh, if, if you want to make your own levels, if you want to explore these things, uh, the code source is available, you can use it kind of freely. So yeah, if you want to try new things, go around and fuck around and find out. Finally, yeah, what it brings you as a, as a game developer. How are we on time? Is it fine? Yeah, cool. What it brings you as a game developer to work on, on, on these games, uh, on mashup games. Uh, there's three things. The first one is a thing I call design appreciation. Uh, working on Super Hot gave me so much appreciation for the design of both Abaisu and Super Hot. Like it allowed me to understand why they designed the game this way, what was interesting, and when the design don't work, uh, what are the limits of a design, and that's fascinating and such, it allows you to grow as a game developer. It, it gives you more tools and, and more ways to have vision about what a game can be. But also because you're mixing up things that didn't exist before, um, you have to discover new design challenges that didn't exist before, so you have to find out new solutions to it. And getting your hand on new problems in game, in game design is very rare and very precious. So it allows you to grow in unexpected ways and I learn so much doing, making this game. The second thing is that um, when I made Super is Hot, I was speaking to both the audience of Super Hot and the audience of Abyss U uh, at the same time, even though they are different communities. Uh, Super Hot players uh, like FPS, and they, are, they have a strong Polish and Russian fan base. 
Uh, Baba Is You is loved by puzzle players and has a strong Japanese and Korean fan base. And I discovered by these two communities interactive games very differently. Uh, Japanese and Korean players often do live streams and let's play every game on YouTube and, and Twitch. Often they also can be VTubers. But the Polish and Russian players, they spoke about the game in compilation videos and they torrented the game even though it was free. It's just their way of, of sharing the game with others and that's their way of in, interacting with, um, with the game. And that's very interesting. Uh, by making a single game, I was able to understand how these two communities uh, interact with games. That's precious. And finally, in the spirit of mashing up things together, the third point is a mix-up of the two things before, a thing I call community appreciation. Um, I don't think myself as the sole developer of Super Is Hot. Because, of course, I draw from the design and insight inspiration from Super Hot and from Baba Is You. So I already have like two parents that came before me that I'm learning from. But also, the game wouldn't have been possible without people doing gameplay analysis on YouTube, tutorials on how to recreate effects from Super Hot or how to create like graphic effects from Baba Is You. All this stuff, people making music on the internet of remixes of, of of Baba is You OST so I could use it in my game. All, all of these people, they basically paved out the way for this game to exist. They all created like individual components and I was just the catalyst in the middle of it all. But the way I see it, they all made this thing possible. And for me, that's like a new way to, to think about games where it's not made by a single individual or a single team. It's like games has the products of, um, of a rich community, like they emerge from, from the possibilities we create together and from the discussions we have together. And I just happened to be in the middle of it, in the middle of, of the streams of ideas and concepts. But I'm not the sole creator, I'm just a catalyst. So I'd like to take this to, for you to take this with you, to think about this idea of how we can make games enjoyed by everyone because actually they are made thanks to everyone. That's, that's the core idea behind Super Hot, that's the philosophy. But, uh, but I got. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for, for coming to my talk. <laughs> if you want to, to follow my work, you can follow me on Twitter or on Ijotayo. I have two games who are going to come up uh, in, in fall. And if you, if you like the philosophy and the ideas behind Super Is Hot and you want to see more of that, you can maybe nominate it for the MA's Audience Awards. You can vote for it in the MA space. Or you can vote for Narco. That's a good game. You can <laughs> all cover it. That's also a good game. Thank you. Thank you so much, Parafux. Um, I, I'm really glad for you bringing up this idea of the catalyst. I think that's a really, really powerful idea that here in this collaborative space that we create here really resonates. We are going to take a short break after this. And we will be back at 12.30 with Henrike Lode, who's going to talk about 12 games she's made in 12 months. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you at 12.30. Thank you. Thank you.